around 30 million or one in nine U.S. workers experience their workplace as toxic, according to research conducted by MIT Sloan School of Management. Most of us have experienced these environments where people behave badly across levels. This behavior goes without consequences and it fosters a workplace or culture where you don't feel safe, seen, or valued. Your, and likely everyone else's, work product reflects this and isn't optimal. Trust, respect, and transparency are non-existent, and it feels like everyone is on their own. People are disengaged, they're stressed, and there are several reasons for this. But in my rather extensive experience with senior leaders, they are the problem. Whether through acts of omission, as in being passive, doing nothing, or commission, consciously pitting people against one another, or driving their egotistical agenda forward at the expense of the team or the organization. Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management. Having worked with giants like Google, Spencer Stewart, I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership. And I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires organizational transformation. So I joined a team where my boss's boss, we'll call him Evan, who was very smart, long tenured at the company, and seemingly well regarded in the organization, appeared to be threatened by me. It wasn't apparent at first, but after several interactions where he tried to test me and even start playing mind games with me, I had to accept the fact that he was not to be trusted. Nevertheless, I had to navigate around him to get my job done. My boss was fairly passive and frankly, not a strong leader, which I think was by design so that Evan could be in the spotlight with his superiors. He was unaware of it, uh, this dynamic and in a couple of instances took my side when my performance or integrity was being questioned by his boss. Over the next couple of years, we had our run-ins and it was clear from my performance ratings and pay raises that he inserted himself in the process to make a statement. My boss was helpless, but I wasn't. I had a decision to make. Would I leave or stay and wait it out? I stayed, mostly because I was having impact. Whether he chose to acknowledge it or not, I was modeling leadership, not just in my own group, but across the organization. I was a sought after internal speaker on career management for functional teams and employee resource groups. I was well known by the heads of HR, even Evan's boss and his leadership team. Then it happened. I went to my boss with a proposition. Evan rejected it and wanted me to understand why. He made time to hear me out, but the conversation went sideways and he said some things that I found so objectionable that I went to his boss, the head of HR. She looked into it. And let's just say within a few months, he was gone and I remained. It became apparent that his behavior was not limited to me. There was a pattern of inequitable treatment during his tenure. I felt a sense of relief, but still questioned the lack of accountability that had allowed this person, a senior leader, to have the power and influence he had had and abused for so long. He was a bully. In short, he represented something more rampant than I chose not to continue to subject myself to. The microculture he fostered represented something far more chronic and pervasive than what I had allowed myself to believe. Time to go. So here are four things that can help you if you're in a toxic work environment. First of all, stand your ground and model integrity. Consider confronting bullying behaviors and attempts to intimidate. Respectfully ask a question like, are you saying that my work is not up to the standards you previously set? Or can you explain how you think I should have dealt with that situation? What allowed me to stand my ground in that story that I offered is that a line, I felt a line had been crossed. I, I strongly resented the comments. They went against everything that I knew the entire organization said it stood for. And so that's what pushed me into action. I think a lot of people 
are afraid of standing up for themselves because they, they don't think they'll be heard. And I think if more people, and again, there, there's a fine line here. You know, we're not saying complain about every little statement that hurts your feeling that somebody made. But when somebody senior and influential is basically, it's an abuse of power, in my view. This, that was bullying, as I described it. That's, that should not be acceptable. And so people need to really stand up for themselves um, or at least have someone that they can rely upon to advise them and stand by them in getting um, the organization to look at some of this stuff. Because too long have I heard about these, these are our values and this is our ethos and this is what we stand for and it's breached every day. Come on, at some point that's gonna turn back to bite you. So are others being treated as you are? Quietly observe and inquire if other people seem to have experienced or witnessed similar behaviors from the individual or group of individuals. This requires finesse because if they get wind of it, you could be retaliated against or pretaliated against, punished before you've taken any real action. Number three, learn the rules. HR has employee relations and or other groups, even in the legal department, that have to investigate bad behavior. Um, they have to look into any mistreatment of employees because it can pose, as I said, a legal and even financial risk to the organization. Again, be discreet, be quiet, leverage your relationships to get the facts you need, and in extreme cases, get legal advice or counsel before making a big decision. Number four, vote with your feet. Um, like in my situation, I had to decide if I wanted to be part of an organization that had allowed the bad behavior to begin with. And at a minimum, consider moving to a different team that has a stronger leader who insists upon an equitable work environment. I think the best way for a leader, if you're part of a smaller team um, versus you know, the entire organization, is to do an employee engagement survey. Um, you know, there's the informal way of kind of having your ear to the ground, but to get some data, um, which it can, that's gonna be imperfect too, because depending on how toxic things might be, they might not, your team might not trust you to give you their honest feedback when responding to what will be an anonymous survey. Um, but at least it directionally should let you know that yes, indeed, you do have a problem, or no, maybe things aren't as bad as they were. Um, I would probably supplement any kind of an engagement survey, which you can get online or with any consulting organization. Um, I'd supplement those with <clears throat> some one-on-ones with uh, people whom you trust and have built a little bit more rapport with to know what's really going on. First of all, I think a toxic environment is defined in terms of how people feel. It, it's, a, it's hard to measure, it's a, it's a feeling, it's sort of the soup that people are moving around in day to day. It's not the company's reputation, um, but it's how are you being treated? How do you feel, uh, how are other of your peers your bosses, how are they treating you? How do people treat one another? Do you feel safe? Do you feel like you can trust your team members and your leadership? And I, and I keep going back to leadership because as I might have said before, leaders are modeling this behavior. If there are bad behaviors going unchecked regularly, you almost absolutely have a toxic environment because there are no consequences to bad behavior and it's essentially a free for all. And so I'm a big believer in calling it out and saying enough, this isn't right and I'm not gonna stand here and witness the hypocrisy of bad behavior. So I've got a resource for you. It's an article from Harvard Business Review called How Bullying Manifests at Work and How to Stop It. And as you've heard me describe, I think bullying contributes significantly to a toxic work environment. And the link will be in the video description. I know firsthand how taking that first step can be the catalyst for a life-changing transformation. I remember the moment I decided to harness my own strengths and it made all the difference in my career. That's why I've created a career mapping tool for just you to use to uncover your unique competencies and leverage them to design your own career map. Take the first step towards your next level by clicking the link in the video description and let's start this incredible journey together.